Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So sorry I was gone for a few days, it was a bit under the weather, but hey, we're back. And in this video, we have some pretty interesting topics that I'd like to discuss. Number one, AM5 apparently is only going to support DDR5. Oh no, whatever will we do? Uh, the community reaction to this is really what's sparking my interest in actually making a video on it. So that's gonna be the main topic here today. PlayStation 5 is also finally supporting VRR. I mean, let's slow clap for Sony for, you know, implementing something that's a basic HDMI 2.1 standard. But hey, it's finally happening, although with some caveats, and we'll talk about that. And then NVIDIA, they just can't let it go. They have to throw shade whenever possible. So NVIDIA is out there throwing shade at both AMD and Intel. So we're going to be talking about all that here today. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so starting off with Sony PlayStation 5 to get HDMI 2.1 variable refresh rate support for 14 games. 14 games? What? What? That was my thought when I saw this earlier today. I was like, why 14? This, this shouldn't be this difficult, guys. I mean, FreeSync and VRR, these have been around forever. I mean, in fact, even the PlayStation 4 should have been able to do this. At least the PS4 Pro should have. But anyways, so variable refresh rate support for PS5 is rolling out this week. So here's the list of games that it will be supported. So you have Astro's Playroom, Call of Duty Vanguard, Black Ops Cold War, Destiny 2, a lot of Activision games, apparently. Um, Devil May Cry 5, blah, 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 blah. You can read it for yourself. For the most part, you got some of the big first party titles in there like Spider-Man and Ratchet and Clank. And then you have your Activision Call of Duty games. No Apex Legends, no, you know, there's many other games that could probably benefit from this, but they don't. Now, as many people have pointed out, the HDMI 2.1 standard has changed here recently. The original standard had VRR as a mandatory part of it, much like DisplayPort. And nowadays it doesn't really mean anything as even 4K 60 hertz, basically HDMI 2.0 can be called 2.1 because reasons, which really limits the reason why anybody should be using HDMI if they're going to make things confusing. The only reason why you stay with a standard if it's clear and everybody knows what's going on. Regardless, this will be set up here soon in the Sony control panel. You can turn it on. So that's cool. The problem is it's in just a handful of games. Does not work on backwards compatibility titles. Doesn't work on, well, the majority of the library. So to me, this is kind of a nothing burger. Until it works on literally every single game the PS5 can play, including backwards compatible titles and older titles, emulated games, literally everything, who really cares? But, you know, if you have a PS5 and you have something like an LG OLED, well, you're going to want to use it, at least in the limited titles that they have so far. But overall, it's a step in the right direction, but why is it taking them so long on this? I have no idea. All right, so next up, NVIDIA claims superiority with its game-ready drivers, jokes about competitors' subpar beta drivers with multiple forks. So this is just NVIDIA. They came out with this video right here. You can go ahead and check it out for yourself if you want. But they're just throwing shots out there on how they go ahead and test out every single driver. Every single one is uh, Windows compliant. That comes with the, uh, the Microsoft Windows Hardware Quality Labs, otherwise known as WHQL and they go through another 1300 tests over at Microsoft. And honestly, I can't be too upset with NVIDIA saying the truth. Honestly, it takes AMD forever to get WHQL drivers out. And honestly, I do not use any driver that's not WHQL on Windows because honestly, a lot of the beta drivers do have issues. And yeah, when you use the WHQL ones, those don't have issues. So yeah, I, I think that this is a fair thing, but honestly, it just feels strange for NVIDIA to be like, yes, we come out with a new driver for every single game that we bring out. Personally, I think find that annoying. I personally just update my drivers maybe twice a year and that's it. Uh, if I need some new feature that came out, yeah, I'll update for that. But for the most part, I do not update my drivers for a new game because I don't buy new games very often. And honestly, usually the old drivers work just fine. But that's my take on it. I find it a little annoying that every time I start up my PC with Windows and with an NVIDIA card, hey, there's a new driver. It's like, no, go away, shut up. I'll download you if and when I ever want you, which is, like I said, very rare. But regardless, this is something that they feel is going to be a big deal competing with both AMD and Intel. 
as they go ahead and really do pour in a lot more time, a lot more money, and a lot more effort into their drivers than either AMD and Intel, honestly, probably more than they do combined at this point in time, or at least the results seem that way. So according to the article here, it feels like that NVIDIA is wanting to make this a key selling point as they're most likely going to lose next generation of GPUs and probably by a huge margin. We're talking GeForce 4 versus Radeon 9700 Pro type spanking is probably in the works. So they're gonna lean on every possible advantage that they have. I feel that this is fair for them to lean on because it is true, but at the same time, they have their own driver issues. We all know that, so whatever. And then a lot of people on Linux hate the fact that they're not open source over there, which is a negative, but whatever. For me personally, they work just fine, so who really gives a shit? But, but yeah, I just found it a little bit strange that they wanted to throw shade on this one. Um, it really just lets me know how afraid they are of AMD's next generation of graphics cards because they know they can't win, and the only thing that they can do is go, yeah, we got better drivers, meanwhile, not really. They just go through them and they do have better testing and things like that. But at the end of the day, the AMD drivers still work. So whatever. Now, speaking of AMD ruffling some feathers, this article came out a few days ago. Uh, AMD next gen AM5 X670 and B650 motherboards to only support DDR5 memory. Um, this is really throwing a lot of people into a tizzy. Now, this comes from uh, Tom's Hardware, and basically they got a breakdown sheet of what the motherboards are going to support. And yeah, I mean, you can go ahead and look at it. There, there's nothing crazy here. This is what we were all expecting for the most part. So if this is true, great. Now, I've been saying this pretty much since forever. AM5 means DDR5. AM4 does not support any other memory type but DDR4. AM3 does not support any other memory type but DDR3. AM2 supported only one memory type, and that was DDR2. So this has been the standard since DDR2 was a thing. And you could technically go back to like 939 with the Athlon 64s, which was DDR1, and you can keep going back even further. Typically it was one platform, one memory type, and there you go, that's it. And mostly it's due to the fact that AMD just doesn't wanna have the dual memory controllers. Intel, however, does. Now, a lot of people be like, well, Intel did it. Well, Intel also sells like 95% of the world's processors. So they have to have this compatibility with other systems. AMD makes very niche and very small quantities of CPUs. Hate to break it to you guys, they're big in the DIY space. That's about it. They're doing pretty good in server too, but Intel supplies the whole planet and most of the mobile stuff. So they have to be as compatible as possible. And yes, they were also first to DDR5 about what, six months ago, nine months ago now? I mean, it's been a little while and they were first there. So they needed to get another option. AMD is coming out a year later after mainstream DDR5 was a thing. Supposedly, they might come out sooner, but about a year later. And for them, it makes sense to just go DDR5. It's also most likely that when Zen 4 comes out, you're gonna have your top tier parts only. You may not even have a six core option, to be perfectly honest. You may not even have an eight core option. AMD just came out with an eight core 3D cache AM4 chip that does really, really well and mitigates the fact that it's using DDR4. That's all the cache does, is it's basically an AM4 chip that runs like it's using fast DDR5. That's what the X3D chip essentially is. So you still have that option on AM4 if you wanted to go ahead and get that. You also have Zen 3, which is very, very capable, and that will make up the, I guess you could say, mainstream CPUs for them for a while. And then eventually they'll come out with less and less expensive CPUs as time goes on, very much like what they did with Zen 3. See, the difference with Zen 3 was they did have the six core, but it was $300, which isn't too out of this world. But imagine if they just came out with the 5800X, 5900X, and 5950X. I would expect something like that coming with Zen 4, and then later they'll roll out the six core version at a more attractive price, and then you will have cheaper motherboards, you'll have cheaper RAM, and then everybody will eventually transfer over. But yes, anybody expecting to use DDR4 on AM5 or a Zen 4 CPU, it's just not gonna happen, guys. The whole point of the 5800X 3D was to kind of bridge that gap if you need that extra performance and you wanna use DDR4, that's the chip that you buy. 
Would have been nice if they came out with a 16 core version. So if you need the high core count as well, then you'd have an option there. But such is life, guys. DDR5 is clearly going to be the future. I did testing myself. DDR5 makes a huge difference with Alder Lake. It will make a big difference with Zen 4 as well. Imagine if they did allow DDR4 and you get the same performance with Zen 4 as you do with Zen 3 with DDR4. And then everybody would be like, well, what's the point in buying this? You have to buy the DDR5 to get good performance. So yeah, the main reason why AMD did this with the Phenom 2s, uh, basically it was AM2 and AM3 compatible. The motherboard didn't switch, meaning you can't use DDR2 on AM3, but you could choose which socket you wanted to put the CPU in. They did that because of the transition phase, but this time around, they're going to LGA. This is something that I forgot, and Paul reminded me over on the Techonomics podcast the other day. It's a completely different thing. They can't make them pin compatible. There's just no way to do it. So that option is completely off the table. So anybody expecting, no matter how much money you spend on your DDR4, uh, for AMD at least, the fastest CPU you can get is the X3D, 5800 X3D. And that's it. There is no upgrade option for your RAM. This also lets me know that there's a lot of people spending way too much money on RAM out there because they want that little extra performance, but they want RAM to basically be like power supplies. It'll last forever. No, you don't spend that much money on RAM. You buy the cheaper stuff and you can just toss it aside when it's time to move on. It's not the end of the world. So, so I mainly want to do this video to land proper expectations. Do not hold out hope for something that just simply isn't going to happen, was never going to happen, and has never happened before in AMD history. You're basically asking for something that there's no basis for. Now, hey, I like asking for stuff that I know I'm not going to get either, but at the same time, land your expectations appropriately. Well, already, guys, that's really all I have to say about this one. If you want to chat more about it, I will be live tomorrow with Paul from Not an Apple Fan over on the Techonomics podcast. Links are down below so we can chat about these kind of things. I am interested to hear what you guys think about AM5 being DDR5 and why would anybody have a problem with this? I don't know, but I want to hear your thoughts. Also, NVIDIA throwing shade because more drivers, more betterer. I mean, technically true, but at the same time, who cares? I mean, I, I want to know, do you care? I don't care. Do you care? Uh, so I'm kind of interested there. So I want to hear your thoughts. And then if you want to support the channel, please click the like button, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Love you guys. And that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.